Okay, okay. Message received. I understand Kylian Mbappe cannot give himself a new contract as player director of football. However, my chairman can renew the director of football's contract. So it is still possible between the two of them for them to work something out that keeps him at the club beyond the end of this season. Or he might just leave on a free. We're going to find out one way or the other in this episode. Hello, folks, and welcome to part six of my series where Kylian Mbappe is player director of football at Paris Saint-Germain and is in control of all transfers whilst I try and win the Champions League with the ridiculous squad that he's assembled. If that's exciting, if you're enjoying the series, make sure you leave a thumbs up. Remember, as soon as this episode hits 5,000 likes, I'll release the next one. That's been the rule all the way through the series. It will be the rule all the way through the rest of the series. You could make this daily if you wanted to. You just need to do your 5,000 likes per episode. But just to bring you up to speed with where we are, it is uh, December, or just about to be January of our third season. We are comfortably top of Ligue 1, as you would expect. Um, and we are also doing pretty well in the Champions League. We did get Liverpool in our Champions League group, but we have uh, we have survived Liverpool in our Champions League group. Survive is probably the operative word. We didn't win our group, but we have made it through to the uh, to the next round uh, despite a uh, despite a couple of scares along the way um we're going to win the league comfortably interesting win uh, messi not the top scorer in the league anymore um which is what he always had been previously i'm not actually scoring at a goal a game anymore either not having started every single match but what do you expect really when we've got all of the attacking talent that we've got in addition to the neymar and mbappe Messi front three that was here when I arrived. We now also have Tammy Abraham, Christian Pulisic and Gabriel Jesus who are all ready and raring to, to step in as and when those contracts expire. And we are still in a situation where those contracts could be expiring. As you can see, um, Messi, Neymar, Mbappe, Pogba, the big four, all still out of contract at the end of this coming season as of tomorrow in game. They are available for pre-contracts. Um, or in fact, I guess it's as of today because Benfica are already in with an offer for Paul Pogba. So Pogba might be on his way. The question is, will Messi, Neymar and Mbappe be joining him or will any of them get new contracts? Just to confirm, um, the contract renewals and the transfers and stuff, it's all being done by Kylian Mbappe apart from, if we go into the staff responsibilities, director of football that is my chairman can do that so it is possible for Mbappe to get a new contract but presumably has to be arranged by the chairman with negotiations with Killian himself no one's in for him because he's on a £950,000 a week he's not going to want it no one's going to be able to pay him that I don't think he's going to go I think he might stay it would be interesting whether his new contract keeps him as director of football and whether it's on more or less money than he's on now um, some very interesting scenarios could be presenting themselves. Uh, Christian Pulisic is already unhappy, having been our big headline summer signing. Uh, he's not been given the football that he would have hoped for. I mean, I would like to think when we brought him in, can I just show his history? It would have been on the understanding that he's ready to step up and take over from Neymar and Messi when they move on. He was never going to be a starter this season. It's next season he's here for, so he needs to not get too much of a grumpy on, although there are players that agree with his grumpiness. So he's got um, Karaviev and Morrow on his side. Two more of the boys who came in in the summer and aren't getting game time. It's the same old story. Every transfer window, players are brought in and then the team that we use is still largely the players that were here at the start of the save. In fact, the only player that Mbappe has signed that is in our current starting eleven is Fabian at the base of the midfield. Everyone else in there are players who were here two and a half years ago when the save began, which I think says a lot about Killian's transfer policy. Uh, but he has got money to spend going into January. There's room in the wage budget for contract renewals. There's plenty of spendsies. There's potentially players on their way out of the door with unhappiness. So I guess we need to, I guess we need to jump forward in time to the end of the January transfer window and see what business is done. So it is transfer deadline day. There's already been some business that's gone through. We've signed Demiral from Bayern Munich. Another centre-back coming in. Apparently, we really like centre-backs. 
Um, Noah Lemina, who's one of the heroes of my tour save at the moment, has left the club for three and a half million pounds. Um, and Schlager has gone to Lazio on loan. He was someone who didn't really want to be around the club. There's lots of deals that have nearly happened. We've made a forty-four million pound offer for Memphis to buy at Barcelona, which has been turned down. Neymar has turned down a contract from Real Madrid. He's on £600,000 a week with us. I can only imagine they didn't offer him enough money because he's been on the transfer list here for two and a half years. But turning down Real Madrid, who presumably are going to be the, the one of the few clubs who could actually offer him anywhere near what he wants, I suggest Neymar probably just leaves on the 30th of June when his contract expires. But Paul Pogba has agreed a pre-contract. He's going to be going to Chelsea um, so we're finally going to get the troublemaker Paul Pogba off the books after three years of him basically just being a grumpy, grumpy goose. So into deadline day, I, the only deal rumoured to be a possibility is the Memphis Depay deal. It seems like an absolutely insane deal. We do not need another forward. That would be seven Champions League quality forwards we'd have at the club if we brought Memphis Depay in as well. There is no reason for us to have him unless unless there's confidence that Neymar leaves by the end of the day. But I can't imagine there is. So if Neymar's still going to be here, there's no reason to bring in Depay. But there was no reason to bring in Pulisic either. And we did that back in, Jan back in July. So who knows? Oh, there you go. We might be bringing in a backup goalkeeper. Axel Werner might be coming in as a third-choice goalkeeper. Um, don't really care about that. We're about halfway through deadline day now. Eight hours remaining there. Easy confirmation that the new goalkeeper is in. What an exciting deadline day signing that is. A third choice goalkeeper. Oh, Killian, you're spoiling us. Imagine sending Lionel Messi to welcome Axel Werner to the club. I mean, I guess they are both Argentinian. I'll give them that. Otherwise, it just... Hey, Leo, come Come and welcome the third choice goalkeeper. Make sure he feels at home. Yeah, I know you've just won another Ballon d'Or, but earn your, earn your keep, young man. All right. Uh, Delict. Again, Delict is a player we don't need because we've signed all these centre backs recently. Um, agent offer stuff. Yeah, we don't need any of those guys. It doesn't look like we're going to be doing any deadline day business. So I think we're going to have to go into this Champions League run this knockout run with what we've got. It doesn't look like any more is coming in. And realistically, I think if we're going to win the Champions League, this feels like the best opportunity to do it because next year, there's going to be no Mbappe. There's going to be no Messi. There's going to be no Neymar, at least as things stand. So there's your confirmation of our January business, a particularly uninspired January. Um, let's register players. Can we not even get Jesus in our Champions League squad? That is a desperate situation. Demorel's come in. We can't fit him into the Champions League squad. Yikes, Killian. Just big yikes here. Um, right, we don't need Moro in. Let's get let's get Jesus in instead of Moro. And then get rid of Vina, get Demorel in. We've got to, we've got to at least try and pick a decent squad. To have that many unregistered players shows how clueless this recruitment policy has become. It is ever so alarming, but somehow we've got to try and win the Champions League, despite the fact I've just upset a lot of players. Um, I apologize. I'm just going to apologize. All I can do is apologize to them. I'm sorry. I haven't built the squad. For once, this kind of thing is not my fault. Blame, blame Killian. It's all on him. Right, we are going to jump forward now to the knockout games. Um, we have got, if we go on the schedule, uh, Manchester City up first. So I don't normally show you the, um, the first knockout round, but this might be a very short knockout adventure this year, having finished second. So we might even be seeing Manchester City. Well, it turns out this uh, Erling Haaland guy, I don't know if you're familiar with him, is quite good and is something of a problem. Um, also a problem, we are in our second leg against Manchester City. 3-3 three, three from the first leg, 4-3 uh, down on aggregate. And Mbappe went off injured after a couple of minutes. Um, that's not ideal. Uh, so Neymar is on. We're also having to play Chalaba 
at the base of the midfield because we're kind of done with Paul Pogba now. So we've shuffled our midfield around. Uh, so Chalaba's in, Demaral's in. Um, Tammy Abraham's in great form up front. But as much as I love Tammy Abraham, he is no Erling Haaland. And at the moment, it's Haaland's goal that is separating the two teams and could be leading to another early Champions League exit. And like I said before, next year... We're going to have to try to... Oh, no, Hakimi's injured. Next year, we're going to have to try and do it without Messi, without Neymar, potentially without Mbappe. And players are dropping like flies today as well. Um, we are going to have to change something in a minute. We are still sticking to Killian's tiki taka 4 3 3 that he is so... His heart is set on us using. Uh, the one advantage if he does move on is it might leave me with a little bit of a... A little bit of extra time. We'll do one. We'll squeeze one more year in at the end, so that we can uh, so that we can try and do it with whatever is left over, and use a different system. Because this ticky tacker thing is it doesn't fill me with a huge amount of confidence. And I think Phil Foden has just grabbed the goal that is going to lead to us being knocked out in the first knockout round. I mean, we started this series to try and establish whether Kylian Mbappe having all this power over transfers and personnel at Paris Saint-Germain was a good idea. Would it ultimately lead to PSG winning a Champions League? What I'm discovering is probably not because he has no idea what he's doing in the transfer market. The fact that... Oh, I mean, that's actually a very good save, I think, from Donnarumma. Um, it might have been Demiral who got across and made the uh, made the covering tackle, uh, but we just we haven't freshened up the team enough. I mean, saying that Manchester City haven't got loads and loads of new signings in their team either for nearly three years into the save, but we uh, yeah, this team is aging, and the players that we've got coming in, I don't know if Pulisic is your name our replacement. For example, um, I don't know if Chalaba is your Sergio Ramos, I guess, replacement in the squad. Um, I think we need to be aiming a little bit higher than some of these players. And it's, it does very much seem to be like my boy Killian is just trying to make sure that nobody he brings in overshadows him. He brings in players that are just about good enough to keep them competitive in the league, keep us in the knockout rounds of the Champions League, but never, ever outshine him. Can't possibly be that kind of thought process. But, you know, there is the possibility that next year we can have a very fresh-looking PSG team. No Pogba, no Neymar, no Messi. Just got to hope Killian sticks around. We have been absolutely ruined here. We are not even competitive. And I, I didn't show you the first half because I was kind of hopeful that we'd have we'd find a way to get back into it and we'd have more of a cup run to show you. But alas... That is not the case. So I normally end these videos when we're knocked out of the Champions League, but it's so early in the season still that I think we do just need to finish off the season and confirm our finishing spot. The board are going to be pretty unhappy that we've got knocked out before the semi-final. Um, I don't think my job is under any kind of threat. I've got a contract for another two years. But all eyes now are on whether any of the big guys sign new contracts before the end of the season. Well, we've made it to the end of the season and Messi is retiring. So he's definitely not going to be sticking around. Neymar is wanted by Wolves and Napoli. I don't think either of them are going to pay Neymar's salary. Uh, Muriel Pogba have already got deals to join other clubs. The one who is still uncertain is Kylian Mbappe. And really, we need some certainty there so we know what's happening. This is a Kylian Mbappe series. If he leaves, I guess the series ends. So rather than ending it here, we're going to keep going until his contract expiry day. We're going to double, double check that the chairman is in a position to give him a new contract if he wants to. One thing I have noticed is he's been downgraded to a fringe player, which I bet went down really well with him. I'm hoping there's a new contract in his very near future or this project might be over. Well, they've snuck it into an inbox message that 
includes Maxime Boucher, our second team physio, signing a new contract. But there is your confirmation. Kylian Mbappe has signed a new four-year contract as player director of football of Paris Saint-Germain. He's taken a £300,000 a week pay cut. It will keep him at the club until he's 30. And he is still the director of football. We have four more years of the Kylian Mbappe project, boys and girls. He remains in control of all incoming, outgoing contracts, transfers, and he's got a rebuild on his hand, hands because although he's sticking around this summer, Pogba, Messi and Neymar are all leaving the club. Good job we've got money to spend. You want to get those 5,000 likes now so you can see what happens next. As soon as we hit 5,000 likes, the next episode drops. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.